In this video, we're going to go over the differences between heterochromatin and euchromatin, as well as go over telomeres and centromeres. The easiest way to understand the difference between euchromatin and heterochromatin is by looking at this diagram. As you can see, the main difference between the two is by how densely packed the chromatin fibers are. In euchromatin, the chromatin fibers are lightly packed. Since they're lightly packed, the DNA is accessible by RNA polymerase, so this DNA can be actively transcribed. In heterochromatin, the chromatin fibers are densely packed. RNA polymerase cannot access the DNA, so this DNA cannot be transcribed. There are two different types of heterochromatin. There is constitutive heterochromatin, which is always in the heterochromatin state. And there is also facultative heterochromatin, which can switch between heterochromatin and euchromatin depending on the conditions. Constitutive heterochromatin, since it's never transcribed, are generally repetitive DNA sequences with structural roles. So examples of constitutive heterochromatin include centromeres as well as telomeres, which we'll discuss more about shortly. Facultative heterochromatin, these may include coding regions, and these are essentially coding regions that have been silenced. So the gene expression has been turned off. Now, for a facultative of heterochromatin, as we said, it's possible for it to switch between the inactive form, heterochromatin, to the active form, euchromatin. One mechanism for how this can occur is through histone acetylation and deacetylation. If you recall, DNA has a negative charge and is attracted to the positive charge of histone proteins. Histone acetylation will add an acetyl group to the side chains of the positively charged basic amino acids. This removes the positive charge, weakening the attractive electrostatic interaction between DNA and histone proteins. So this essentially makes the chromatin less densely packed, converting the heterochromatin into euchromatin so the gene can now be expressed. Histone deacetylation has the opposite effect. So instead of adding acetyl groups, histone deacetylation will remove acetyl groups, reintroducing the positive charge on the histone proteins and turning euchromatin into facultative heterochromatin. All right, so we can see here, acetylation is one important mechanism for changing euchromatin into facultative heterochromatin and vice versa. While we're on this topic of altering gene expression, I also want to talk about DNA methylation. Generally, DNA methylation, the addition of methyl groups on DNA molecules, results in silencing gene expression. A very famous example of this is in females, the inactivation of one of the two X chromosomes. It's caused by DNA methylation. However, I do want to note that there are a number of instances where it is possible for DNA methylation to increase gene expression. But for the purposes of the MCAT, you should keep in mind that generally DNA methylation will result in gene expression silencing. Okay. So now let's talk about telomeres and centromeres. If you might recall, telomeres are repetitive sequences at the ends of chromatins. As we just discussed, these are constitutive heterochromatins, so they have a structural role. They protect the ends of DNA from degradation, and they also prevent DNA from shortening during DNA replication. As you might recall in our DNA replication video, there is an end replication problem where the ends of the DNA cannot be fully replicated in the lagging strand. So usually telomeres will also shorten in sequence, but that's prevented by telomerase enzymes that will extend the telomere sequence. Centromeres are also constitutive heterochromatin. And these are a region of repetitive sequences where sister chromatids are linked together. They're important in biology because they serve as the assembly site for kinetochores, which is a protein complex that mitotic spindles will bind to during mitosis. 
Now, there's a few different terms here that students often confuse. Centromeres, kinetochores, centrosomes, as well as centrioles. So just to clarify, centromeres is a region on DNA where cystochromatids bind to and the kinetochore protein complex can form. The kinetochore co protein complex is a complex that mitotic spindles bind to. Centrosomes are organelles and cells that are composed of two centrioles and they build the mitotic spindle. So make sure you take some time, review these terms so you don't confuse them for the MCAT.